Hi everyone, my name is Charmaine and I'm the dietitian that helps people reverse type 2 diabetes with plant-based eating and today is such a special treat because not only do I have Galia with me, I also have Adrian, our client with us as well and this is super special and this is actually our first time um, doing all the three of us together. Usually it's just me and Adrian or Adrian with Galia. Um, so this is definitely a special treat for us. We're going to have a great conversation. Um, you guys can say hi to everyone. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> awesome. So um, Adrian, um, I know most of most of the people know me and Galia, but um, would you care to introduce a little bit about yourself and how your journey has been when you um, are in, on this reversing diabetes journey? Sure. Uh, so my name is Adrian. Um, I met you and through, I think, Instagram. I kept seeing you on my feed because, you know, Instagram and all these social media sites re listen to what we say. And then all of a sudden it says, hey, you need to follow this lady. <laughs> so um, I knew and I, you know, followed you and here we are um i've been on a diabetic journey probably since my mid-20s maybe or early 20s and i am now uh, 49 so i've been going through it for a, a good while and i never really took it seriously i didn't take it to this level of watching myself and watching what i eat uh i did fall into that whole um idea of that you know you can't eat carbs this and that and you know, all, all the things that people believe in today. Um, once I, I, I've gone through with a lot of different kind of medications from insulin to um, different injections to pills, tons of different pills. And I, at the time, didn't think, I didn't realize I was literally going up and up with doses and different kinds. And um you know, uh, not that long ago, I was taking a, a slew of things and it does take a toll on your body in a lot of different ways that you don't even realize. And I would say it's probably a little different, not a whole lot, but a little bit different from a man to a woman of how it affects you. Um, from neuropathy to uh, ulcers on your foot that I've had uh, to all kinds of stuff. So when I came across you, I had already known kind of that there is a way to do this. I just didn't have the right person to lay it on me and show me. And that's when I finally booked a call with you and uh, learned all about what you show and teach and profess with your background and everything. And going forward, I mean, that was the best decision next to marrying my wife. That was the best thing I've ever done. And you have literally taught me not just me, but my partner and my wife on how to eat better, how to read labels, how to basically pay more attention to what goes into your body and, you know, be educated. And this, this way of living is just so much better to, to, I, I'm still discovering new things today, even though I've already gone past your program, I've lost all my medications. I've, uh, you know, I've lowered my A1C from like, a 14 down to a 6.4. Um, if anybody knows, a 14 is deadly. And uh, after watching a couple family members uh, on my wife's side uh, pass away, including her father just recently, um, yeah, if you don't be careful, it's really easy to become a statistic. And with your help, Charmaine, with Gallia's help, which Gallia, I, I can't say enough of, uh, just literally, you guys are the two best coaches I, I, that are out there. You really show what, what love is. Oh, thank you, JJ, and you're so sweet. I love what you said about um, just, you know, being able to break the cycle. I think that's, you know, definitely a common theme. Um, and it's interesting, you know, how were you, because you were mentioning that, you know, before you were taught that, you know, carbs is not good, you have to do low carb and all that, but then your medications are increasing um, at the same time. So how did that, you know, because what we're doing is very different from low carb, right? It's very high carb. It's of course, like it's good carbs, right? Like fruits, vegetables, but it's very different from what you did. And was there any resistance in thinking like, ooh, like, I'm scared of carbs. Was there any any thoughts like that? Any experience like that 
um, or you're kind of resistant towards that? Well, of course. I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I know what you mean. Um, when we think of potatoes and all these starchy carbs, we don't, you know, I don't know about you, but in my past, you know, I always had French fries, potatoes that are, you know, loaded with uh, sour cream, butter, this, that. Um, but the way you teach us how to eat these same foods, you know, and the way you tell us, okay, do it this way, don't do it this way. It's better if you do it this way. You know, you learn how to treat these foods that come from the ground, a lot of them. And at first I was a little like, oh man, this is going to be a little hard. And I was very surprised how easily it was transitional um, down to <clears throat> how do you eat when you go out to a restaurant? Um, you know, even down to, okay, I ate and I, I say um, going off script. Uh, I went off script today, but guess what? People like Galia who coach me and I, I know we call her coach because she is a coach gets you right back and lets you know, Hey, you're not perfect. And this is going to happen. So just get back on track, get back on track and keep going to that goal. Amazing. I love that. And I love that that's something that's stuck with you beyond the program because that's real life. You know, I think any program that tries to teach you of, oh, you have to be perfect all the time and, you know, flexibility, you can't afford any flexibility, you can't have these foods. Anything that is ultra restrictive is, is not going to be a long term solution. It's not going to be a long term way of life. Right. So learning how to have that flexibility and, and learning how to really decide, you know, do I actually want to have this treat meal you know and Adrian I, I I showed you the other day I went out to an Italian restaurant and I and I enjoyed myself right I made the most out of that evening but I made sure that the whole week leading up to going out to that restaurant because I booked it three weeks <laughs> ahead and I was super excited you know I made sure you know I'm going to do the best that I can so that I can enjoy this meal and then get straight back to it and not have that be something that, you know, means, oh, well, I'm, you know, I've given up or I've failed, right? So I love that that's something that's stuck with you beyond the program, because that's real life. Um, yeah. You know, Galia, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> when you sent me that, my wife and I were looking at it going, she was melting because she's a cheese lover like you. <laughs> and we looked at that and just like, it, oh my god we, we were just like lost and then I thought oh my god but you're right it all goes back to you know we're good we're human we're gonna do this occasionally you know like you said you built up to that day um but you got right back on track mm -hmm. and that thing you know I know with some other diets and and this is this is basically a way of life uh you get back on track and that's the key it's kind of like the saying goes if you get knocked down you know, how quickly do you get up? That's the Absolutely. real. Absolutely. And I was saying this because on, for those of you who don't know, Adrian will remember this, but on the program on Wednesdays, that's kind of when we run through everyone's journals and, and give them that feedback. That's very specific feedback for the things that they've been eating. And you know, I always tell people you have to be real with yourself. You have and being honest with yourself is the most important thing. So it's OK to have moments where, you know, you have moments of weakness or you crave something. And, and you know, you have to be real with yourself about is that something that I actually really want to have? Am I truly having a craving for some chocolate or is it that I'm bored and it's there? Is it that I'm feeling emotional or overwhelmed and, you know, I want that instant gratification right so as long as you're honest with yourself about what you're feeling right we can then assess how to approach things and you know if you are truly craving some chocolate go ahead and have a piece of chocolate if you deny that to yourself you're probably then going to go and binge chocolate and have like 10 bars of chocolate and I don't know what I'm using chocolate because that's my weakness <laughs> we all have that. I'm sure I mean that weakness to a certain degree we all have that weird chocolatey. I, my favorite chocolate, I don't know about you, Charmaine, but mine is the one that you get from Trader Joe's over here in California, where we, where, uh, I get this Belgium chocolate, oh, which yeah. mm -hmm. I just, oh my God, that is something like that. But I try not to have that because I know what that's going to do to me. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Well, my weakness isn't really sweets. It's funny because like I always grew up like walking past these bakeries and I was like, mm, like I don't like the smell because it's just like too, you know, in Spanish they say paragoso, like it's just too like sweet to me. <laughs> But my weakness is chips, probably. Like my weakness is like savory, crunchy foods. Um, oh. But I think it's it's interesting because I think the way we design the flexibility system, it's not just you know for for uh, our mental health. It's not just the psychological part, right? Kind of like Galia, how she you know, prior to having her flexible meal, she made sure that she really worked on her insulin sensitivity so that when she does have that meal, like it's not gonna throw her body off too much, right? And so um, it's, it's very interesting because I have a lot of clients tell me that um, they'll have a flexible meal, but it doesn't shoot up their blood sugar as much as it did before, uh, before they started on this lifestyle to reverse their insulin resistance. Their body's ability to be able to bring it back, to bring their blood sugar back to normal is way faster than before. And that's a testimonial to how, you know, when you work on your insulin resistance, when you work on your insulin sensitivity, it really helps your body process meals that may be more processed or higher in fat every once in a while right and so i think that's amazing that you know adrian was able to practice that as well um, that's really really great and one thing that i also want to just discuss as well what do you think because there's a lot of people um you know th this baffles me because a lot of times i say you know, um, fruits is great, you know, like starch is great, rice, you know, brown rice, like they're really great. And then people get really frustrated with me, but then at the same time, like to them, Oreo, French fries, like that's fine. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why there's this, you know, if I say fruits or rice, then that's like a big taboo, but then, you know, usually in their lifestyle, they have way worse products than that. Like, do you want to chime in on, you know, yeah, we'll feel that, that boils down to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Galia, it really boils down to what we've grown up to, to learn. And I have always been told, even my doctors, you know, stay away from carbs, stay away from this. Stay from yeah, they said stay away from cookies and fries too, but stay away from carbs, you know, carbs are, are, are part of the evil, you know, empire. Uh, you have to, you have to understand l through your teaching and Galia's what these carbs the right way uh, made and handled and eaten, what they can do for you and the energy that you will get from this. Prior to doing this with you, my energy level was only a, a ton of coffee, uh, an occasional energy drink with no sugar because you think, oh, well, it's no sugar. I'll, I'm good. You know, like, the ingredients in some of these drinks are unbelievable. Um, so when you get this energy from a lot of these carbs that are healthy and the way they're prepared, and you do not need all that other stuff, you're that is that is fuel for itself. Amazing, I love that, and I love that I, you. Uh, go ahead. So sorry, I, I was just going to say I I totally agree with Adrian here, and I think as well in terms of you know the way people so when. But, on TikTok, for example, or on Instagram, when we talk about, you know, carbs are good, eat carbs, and we get all excited and try to like share that content with people. And then you have some people on the internet who get really upset with you, right? And they'll be like, you don't know what you're talking about. And you're like, well, I kind of think I do because I've studied this and I've seen it work on so many people. But I think that comes from, you know, almost everybody can agree that like, burgers and fries and fast food is not good for you right so I think everyone kind of is on the same <clears throat> wavelength when it comes to that but when you have certain doctors telling patients to not eat fruit and then you come and say eat fruit there's a very big contradiction there and I think people struggle to kind of reconcile that but what people fail to recognize in those moments is that doctors do not have the necessary education when it comes to nutrition. And that is not in any way to, you know, negatively speak about doctors because they're amazing. They study hard. They really do help people. And, you know, their job is very, very difficult, but they do not have that background when it comes to food. That is the realm of a dietitian slash nutritionist, right? So 
you should be taking a nutritionist or a dietitian's word as you know truth when it comes to advice about food like they are the specialists they know what they're talking about but I think it comes from a place where people almost blindly trust their doctors or they've been told these things so many times and it's been so reinforced that it's very difficult when you hear someone saying oh go ahead and eat some fruit this fruit is going to help you you know they don't really know how to how to deal with that absolutely um I also know, and I don't know about you, Gelia, um, I've dealt with, and my doctor, not to put him down or anything, he's a great doctor, but he, to the, to the very end, till my last A1C, he was like literally almost begging me, well, why don't we just bring down the dose? Why don't we just take this and just take half of this? Even my pharmacist, which I happened to go to a, a neighborhood pharmacist who, um, you know, you get to know him on a first name basis. We even have somebody in common we know. He literally will come behind the counter and be like, here, take this, just, just, you know, take this some more. You, you, you really need this. It's going to help you with your kidneys. And I tell him, Hey, you know, this would be better. And that's the fruit. I, I literally have to tell him like, no, put that back. And Absolutely. It, it's but the, so, you know, it really depends on what your profession you know, what your discipline, so whether you're a doctor or a pharmacist or a dietitian, you know, <clears throat> you, you are taught to target issues in a with a particular lens. So doctors yes. and pharmacists are going to want to prescribe, they're going to want to give medications because that is the protocol, right? But I think you have to really, you know, and when I say you, I mean humans <laughs> and the world, but I think, you know, people have to really take a step back and think, okay, so if food got me to this place, surely food is also how I can get out of where I am. So I think that, you know, there's a lot of power in that. And I'm talking a lot, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, you know what? You just said something that I've never heard it put that way. And that is, if food got us here, food will get us out of here. Stop and think about that for a moment, ladies. That is powerful. Very powerful. Right, Charmaine? Yeah, absolutely. I think what's interesting is, you know, a lot of times, or or even advertisement, like uh, recently, because I think maybe I searched something about like diabetes on like YouTube. And so I keep seeing these ads about like diabetic meds and, you know, diabetic shakes and all that. And um, a lot of times it's, they're about, you know, do this and like your A1C will lower or, you know, they, it, it's very interesting because um, I think more so in maybe Western or American culture, we always feel like, okay, there's this pill or shake that will take care of it, you know, but I actually grew up in the Eastern culture and a lot of our medicine is like herbal medicine. And we look at the root cause of things, you know, we, we take a different approach. I mean, we still, you know, take these herbal medicine. It's not like, you know, um, it's not like food, like change, but a lot of times we do talk about like lifestyle change, like sleep earlier, you know, you need to like de-stress, you need to exercise, you know, eat better, things like that. And so I think it's very interesting how just our culture is, you know, we, we look into, all right, like this pill will help us. And, you know, a lot of times it will, like a lot of times people are at a very, you know, dangerous place and they do need a quick pill to help them lower their blood sugar. And I definitely think that's helpful, but I don't think, you know, going down the road of relying on medications and not changing a thing about your lifestyle is going to help with your quality of life. And sadly, you know, a lot of people end up having a lot of different diabetic uh, complications and they end up on dialysis or, you know, just it's very sad, you know, like their, their life isn't as they want it to be. And I remember talking to one of my clients, um, before he joined the program, he was like, wow, like, I just wish I knew this earlier. And I feel like I'm not myself anymore because of type two diabetes. Um, but of course he, you know, now he's doing great on it. And now he's like thriving. He's seeing his lower lowest blood sugar ever. Um, but you know, that's sad. I, th I think a lot of people are, you know, hindered by, by how they feel, um, or just, you know, like Adrian said, like the, the energy levels. Um, Absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I wrote my, my dissertation on 
a very niche topic when I think about it, but uh, all my life is centered around, you know, di the world of diabetes. And um, I wrote my dissertation on, you know, the power of education, like patient education, when it comes to clinical outcomes and clinical endpoints in the diabetic population. So with all the technology that exists for um, management with diabetes, so like continuous glucose monitors and more sophisticated blood glucose um, monitors like finger pricks and the medications and insulin pumps and all of, all of that technology, right? Everything that exists, it's almost useless without the appropriate education because what you see in at least with type 2 diabetes is people get put on medication they don't get that supporting education on how to change their life so they keep feeding to that insulin resistance that's at that baseline and then they end up needing more and more medication the medication they were put on is no longer enough or it doesn't work and they have to get put on different medications or larger doses and without that support on okay this is how we're gonna you know teach you how to eat in a different way and to change things about your lifestyle you know you kind of get hooked for life on pills and tech and stuff and and that's really really sad because those tools should be a means to help you back like come out of that right like I said like if food got you there food can get you out and the medication should be there to support you during that process but not as a long-term solution yeah yeah and I think about like education is definitely a really huge part and I cannot tell you how many times that people are like I don't, like they'll tell me I don't know how type 2 diabetes developed like I've never heard of insulin resistance before I've never heard of um you know I've never heard of insulin sensitivity before I've never heard of you know carbohydrate tolerance or just things like that and I think a lot of times what's sad about our and I'm not I don't mean this to be like cynical or anything I mean this to be you know pivoting and to you know to help spread the word um, I don't mean to be cynical but you know a lot of times it's sad because a lot of people who are diagnosed they're told okay you're you have type 2 diabetes take this pill that's it you know and they're not told okay like what do I do about it uh, and a lot of times the doctors don't even know what they can really do about it um so yeah I, that's something that I feel like yeah I'm sure you, 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 Galia, as well, uh, in certain cases, I know it's a little different, but for me, I, you know, being a type two, he pretty much told my doctors, uh, my doctor that I've had for the last, um, I want to say five, six, seven years, pretty much tells me, you know, you, you, this is what's going to happen for the rest of your life. You're going to be on these pills. You're not going to get off of them. They literally don't attack it in the right way. Not to say that, taking these pills or taking the insulin is a, a, an absolute no-no, but let's attack the problem the right way, which goes back to if food got you there, food will get you out. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And, you know, for, I totally understand that things are di very different depending on where you live. So like the way things are in the US is quite different from how things are where I am in the UK. But even in the UK, like there's not much focus on kind of, teaching a patient what they what they need to know to be able to to cope right and there's not this is such a complicated condition it is affected by so many things like by your sleep by you know your hormones your your emotions can have an impact it's really really difficult to navigate and the more people I speak to the more I realize okay people are not really getting the type of support that they need in the UK, in the US, right? In the UK, I've known people who have been diagnosed and it's it's an outpatient type thing. They give you your pills and, and they send you off and you're there feeling really, open. something huge has happened. Something life, you've gone through something life-changing and you don't get counseling necessarily. You don't get an explanation of, you know, how this has happened, why this has happened, what you can do. It's just kind of, take your meds and go. <laughs> so I think that's, you know, it's really sad when you see that, but it tells you like, it, and, and Charmaine, I don't know if you 
I'm pretty sure you feel the same way as I do here, but I think it's really interesting to see that because you you see what people need, right? And like, I definitely feel it myself as a patient. I'm like, people need so much more support to do this. This is something that's really difficult to, to go through and to cope with and to go through the motions of being like, okay, I'm gonna reverse this, you know? That's tough and you do need a lot of support to go through that. It's sad that most people, you know, don't, have access to that yeah yeah and I think you know for those who are, who are listening you can also play play a role in advocating for more education like hey doctor can you explain to me what is insulin resistance can you explain to me you know why this happens because I think a lot of times people are just okay with all right I'm told this and this and that's it you know like but we really need the education to know okay what to do next and so I would encourage everyone to, you know, advocate for themselves. And um, to wrap things up, Adrian, is there anything that you would like to tell our listeners, um, anything that's on your heart that you want to share with them? A couple of things I would, I, I was just thinking of as I was watching you two talk right now. Um, even this morning when I was, uh, you know, my wife and I are having our coffee and this and that, and we kind of took it a little long time to get our breakfast ready, but I started getting hungry and I was getting ready for this. And I thought, Oh my God, I got to eat. I'm hungry. Always, always. If you guys can remember this, be prepared, have your, your, so to speak, arsenal of, of fruits, uh, things that you love to snack on. If you're ready and you have all your ammo ready, you will never, you will always be ready for the battles that you're going to go through, which can be every day sometimes. So have your fruits, have your healthy snacks, have your uh, water and, 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 and what have you. When you're prepared, you are also preparing yourself for success. When you are not prepared, it's, it's so much easier to just say, you know what, let's go through the McDonald's drive-thru. Oh my God, let's just go get that burrito that we want, that breakfast burrito that's so good. Like when you are prepared, you do that much better and that not only goes for the morning that goes throughout the whole day you know um always be prepared and i know sometimes that can be an economical issue or and or problem but fruit and these things that we speak of and what you teach us is absolutely a must uh with the last thing being said i want to say that you and galia are literally in my life I can speak for my own personal life and my home life here. Cause not only do I do this, my wife does this with me. She, ha she pretty much looked at it and said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to follow this. And uh, we have actually now in, in put this in, infuse this with our two little ones. We have a six and seven year old. I am like amazed. They don't, they drink almond milk and this and different, the right kind of milks and we're watching everything. So like we as a family are getting healthier and better and better. Um, and this is all because of you. And Miss Galia, you guys are amazing. Um, to the listeners out there, take a look at these ladies. They know what they're saying. They know what they're doing. Oh, thank you. Adrian, you are so sweet. You always make me like borderline cry. Like I'm sucking the tears in <laughs> right now. I was like, but, I think Galia's going to cry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to hold it in. But Adrian, you know, I'm so thankful for you. And I don't think this was us. Like we you came to us and we were able to give you the tools that you needed, but you've been doing it all on your own. And like, you are the one that's had the impact on your kids. It's by setting that example for them, right? That they are learning about these things and those changes are happening. So that's all you, you're the one that's been showing up for months and, and putting in the work and you're the one that's got you to this point, right? We just gave you that information that you needed, but you're the one that's been showing up you and your wife, right? Setting the most amazing example you could for your kids. And that's that's gonna stick with them. That's gonna stick with them for the rest of their lives. And that's the most amazing, like I can't, I don't have kids, right? But I could imagine that that's, that must be such an amazing feeling to have. Yes, absolutely. And I thank both of you very much for this. Um, and I know I'm sure a lot of your clients and clients that you will get are gonna be saying the exact same thing as I did. <laughs> thank you so much adrian i think i think you're just you know the prime example of just having the right mindset and and 
just having hope and having the zeal and passion to, you know, really see this through. And I always tell people like, that's really all you need. You know, me and Galia are here to, you know, walk you through everything. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll help you everything with food. You know, we'll tell you what to get, what not to get. We'll help you like get prepared and stuff. But all you really need is just to have the desire to make your life better. And you have just that. So I'm super, super grateful for you, Adrian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Galia, uh, for helping Adrian as well. You, you guys are amazing. I am so lucky. I consider myself the luckiest um, to have you guys around. And um, for those of you who are listening, if you want to learn more about reversing type 2 diabetes, about you know, how to get off diabetic medications for life and how not how to do it without restricting carbs, make sure you check out our free training. It's going to be in the show notes. And if you're interested in joining our reversing diabetes program, you can also book a call with us as well. Um, the link is also going to be in the show notes as well. But thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.